was a time that will never be forgotten. A time when men came to a new land, a land that had waited for them through the long, slow turnings of the sun. Waited for them while the wind blew flat and swift across the grass, the prairie grass that grew belly high in every direction. It was a good land, a rich land, but it would never be an easy land. So it waited for the right men to come, men who could clench their fists around whatever they reached out to take, men who could hunch their shoulders against a storm and keep on walking. Cowards never came and weak men didn't last, but for the men who came and stayed, there was independence and humility and such contentment as few of us will ever know. It's hard to remember now that it all began and grew and spread and changed within 60 or 70 years, within the lifespan of a man. Today, there are only a few men left who were there who remember how it was when men came to a new land and started a new business and were called cowboys. Well, my name is Will McCall. I come through here first in 18 and 84. Me and another feller drove a herd of horses from down near Mexico City clean up to the San Andreas Mountains. Charlie Dillman. Seemed to me it was always waiting. Waiting for morning or for the coffee to boil or for the cows to cross the river. I never minded the work, but I sure got tired of the waiting. When I am a young man come from Sonora, my riata were 60 feet long, raw height. I braided myself 12 stripes. Senor, when my rope sing in the wind, she sing a long song. And the old cow, <laughs> she fall down every time. I've seen lots of cow critters live and die in my time. Lots of men, too. Billy Hilbert's a handle. I come from Sweetwater over near Abilene. That's Texas, of course. My dad rode with Colonel Goodnight in his first ride across the Pecos. There was 400 miles of trouble. No water, plenty of Indians, main ones. The name's Jim Hanson and my brand's a hog's eye. I've been around these parts about 22 years. When you get to be my age, young feller, you like to recollect back. And I got a good memory. My legs just give out, but I got a good memory. Why, I remember back when this country was plumb full of longhorn cows. In them days, for every white man, there was a hundred Indians and 10,000 cows. They was wild cows, Corrientes, the Mexicans called them. They was the granddaddies of all the cows that this country has known ever since. The first ones was left over when the Spaniards tried to settle this country long about, oh, 1600. Them old cows just moseyed off to the hills, and nature being what it is, a couple of hundred years, there was lots of cows. Not much to look at, sort of long on horns and short on everything else. But don't sell them short, because these old cows and the fellers what rounded them up started the business the like of which ain't never been before and ain't never going to be again. In them days, though, a man needed some sure way to get around. She was mighty big country. Cowboys couldn't round up cattle on foot, so first off, they had to get something to ride. That's how come they went out after the wild horses. The Mustangs, they was called. And there's thousands of them running fast and free. All they had to do was catch them. Every bunch was close herded by a stallion. All us on the lookout. He could smell a man a country mile away. There's all kinds of Mustangs, good, bad, and some just plain ornery. But the cowboys always hunted for the best. The fastest stallions, the finest mares. Good'uns that still carried the sign of Arabian blood. 
Once in a while, somebody would spot a standout horse. Me and I'd talk about him around the campfires till it got to be a big thing to try and catch him. Well, I knowed fellers what spent years, maybe their whole life even, a chasing one. Some of them they caught, some they didn't. And the ones they never caught are the ones men still talk about. The Mustangs were a pretty sorry lot. They come from good blood, but inbred and gone wild. They is runty, carried their heads low. The front legs is too close together, and the hind ones was crookeder than a bow-legged jackrabbit. For men who knowed the big eastern horses, a Mustang was an awful come down. But still, they sure did need them before they could start to chasing cows, so they went to work to break and train them. And a funny thing, they found out after all that the Mustang was a good horse, perfect suited for the job. There never was another time when any horse was so right. A green Mustang into a working cow horse took a lot of doing. Don't think it didn't. Every cowboy had to have a string of horses because a man could ride down three or four in a hard day's work. And each one had to be roped and broke and gentled down. A fella had to have plenty of grit in his gizzard to go hand over hand up a rope. To that bronc, a man was only one thing, his enemy. He'd kick and scream, and tromp and pitch and bite, throw everything he had at you. He could split your head wide open and you knew it. Two fellers would ear him down and bridle him, then another fella would sling the saddle on, cinch it tight and climb aboard. When they turned him loose, that's when the fun began. was wild and fast, but they had to learn that a man was gonna be boss. That's why the cowboy grabbed them by the ears and bit, bit hard and kept on biting while he held them. The hurt and the holding rope on another horse would keep a Mustang standing still till he was saddled. Even then, there was no guarantee. No, sir, topping off a mean one, anything could happen, generally did. Riding to run a Mustang down. 
Trying to rope one was like trying to put a loop around the west wind. It was instinct for a bronc to buck. It was his way of fighting loose from mountain lion or cougar or anything what landed on his back. A cowboy had to show him that a man belonged there. The horse, he had to learn about the man. The man, he had to learn about the horse. First time they met, one on each end of the same rope, they both always learned plenty. When a cowboy cut out horses to brand and break, he always looked for what he called an honest horse. Cowboy wanted a horse that had gumption and speed, and maybe even a little spunk. Some of them sure was long on the spunk. seldom used for cow work, never used on a roundup or trail drive, but some of the best was broke and kept at the ranch for breeding. From them first few crosses between the Mustang and saddle horse come the best cow ponies they ever was. Fast, they could travel like wildfire. I've had them turn in wheels so short my boot are dragging the dirt. Stubborn ones a fella had to keep working with. But if he kept at it, they'd finally give in. Or give up. A cowboy took mighty good care of his saddle in them days. A saddle cost a lot of money when he could find one to buy. When a man tied in with an outfit, the other cowboys looked first at his saddle and then at what forked it. If a horse got away with a saddle, it was plenty bad. That's when you'd always hear some old boy yelling, Hey, cowboy! Catch my saddle! Like I was saying, it took a lot of hard work to turn a green Mustang into a working cow horse. Don't think it didn't. It took a lot of convincing. Sometimes it took an awful lot of convincing. They was all kinds, honest ones and cussed ones, stout ones and stubborn ones, and some that was almighty long on the spunk. When the fighting quit after the Civil War, there was a good market for cattle in the East. All the cowboy had to do was figure out how to get them there. That was the hard part. A group of men would go together on a roundup, a case of help your neighbor and he'd help you. There were no road maps in those days, no book of rules to tell them how it should be done. They just went in and learned the hard way. When the cattle were divided up, each man devised a brand to mark his share. 
A lot of trouble could come from two men claiming the same cow or the same herd. Cowboying was a new business. Nobody knew for sure what lay in wait along the trail. But for all the danger, there was a magic to it. Here was adventure, men said. Here was a challenge, a challenge that drew men like a magnet, all kinds of men. Boys just sprouting whiskers, men looking back over their shoulders for a sheriff, ragtag and bobtail, no two alike. But no questions asked, as long as a man knew how to handle a horse, a cow, and a gun. Knew how to swing aboard a saddle when it was time to head the cattle north. North to meet the railroads. The railroads that were stretching out into this new land. Time to start that long, slow walk. One foot after another. One day after another. Mile after mile, month after month, pushing a slow-moving herd, chousing the stragglers back in line, watching the hill rim for a dust trail that might mean Comanche. Fourteen hours in the saddle, six hours sleep, four hours night herd, eating dust and spitting cotton, always heading them north to where you'd heard the railroads was by now. To meet the Kansas Pacific at the town of Abilene, the biggest cattle by in town a man has ever seen. Then there's Ellsworth and there's Newton, and Wichita's real nice. The Santa Fe is glad to pay a cowman's asking price. Them cows is walking north. The railroads is building west. Where they met, a town was starting. These were the towns the cowboy knew. Towns scattered like a pox across the land like freckles on a redhead boy. Austin and Laredo, Tascosa, Santa Fe, Nacogdoches and Paducah, Pierre and Chickasha, Durango, Pocatello, Albuquerque, Laramie, Kalispell or Ogallala, just to name a few. And only time would ever tell which towns died, which towns grew. The railroads brought the people, the railroads brought the towns. And them towns is full of people, like a sack is full of beans. Yes, sir, like a sack is full of beans. Good men, bad men, walking down the street with sweat. country, building it up right. And women, hmm, two kinds. Some brought a cradle and some didn't. <laughs> Say goodbye to the Chisholm Trail and toward the raging red. Take us clad in Colorado, Dodge City straight ahead. A man's a man, but cows are cash. That's what you gotta prove. Get a straddle your old saddle. Them herds has gotta move. trail boss was responsible for the whole outfit. He had to know a lot about a lot of things. 
Like how to take a herd of half wild cows and make them walk a thousand miles. And get to where they were going in better shape than when they started. How to handle men when to josh with one, when to jerk a knot in him. How to make a decision, then maybe live or die by it. But for the cowboy, the most important man in camp was the cook. He was famous for his sourdough biscuits, for his raisin pies, and his disposition. If you wanted to eat regular, you soon learned not to ride into his camp upwind. The cowboys called him a dough puncher, a biscuit shooter, and a belly cheater. But they knew that on a cold and rainy night, he'd keep a fire built up from the coffee boiling. Old Cookie hauled their bedrolls in the chuck wagon, banked their pay, and hid their whiskey. He'd nurse them or he'd curse them. But for lots of cowboys, he kept the only home they ever knew. There were times when the cowboys grabbed their chuck in a hurry. Times when the trail boss ate in his saddle. Times when most of the cowboys stayed with the herd, keeping them quiet, keeping them still, playing counters, watching, waiting. And they were waiting too, watching, waiting for something. Uneasy, ready to spook. You never knew where it had come from. You never knew what it would be. Thunder, smell of smoke, the flare of a match. Or a horse might clear his nostrils. A dust devil could come swirling by.
By the time it is over, millions of cows had made the long, slow walk and cut the trail so deep the scar will live forever on the land. Then trouble came, reeling across the trails. Trouble, strung from post to post with little stinging barbs that glinted in the sun. Trouble, that sometimes turned friend against friend, neighbor against neighbor, the trail driver against them all. Men have a strange way when it comes to owning land. They must own it completely. They draw a line in the dirt and say, this is mine. That is yours, but this is mine. Big men grabbed and little men fought back. They chose up sides and a new breed of cowboy came into being, the gunman. Billy the Kid and a lot of other boys got turned in the wrong direction by a fence war. Men paid to make the law, other men paid to break it. Clay Allison, Wyatt Earp, Pat Garrett, Doc Holliday, quiet John Chisholm. Big men, brave men, whether good or bad. Reason rode on both sides of the fence. Justice sat a straddle. The trail drivers had driven north across the country for years. The Chisholm Trail, the Texas Trail, Raton Pass, Trinchera. These were the highways. All men could use them. All men did. They felt no man had any right to put a fence across the highway. Fence wars ricocheted across the land for years, slammed back and forth, died down, and then flared up again. We've been coming through here for years. You ain't no more. But this here's open range. It ain't no more. It's mine. I homesteaded. Yeah, but man, we've come 400 miles already. There's no water short of three days from here, except in yours. You ain't coming through. You ever heard your cattle fall for water and water 20 feet away? You think three strand of barbed wire's gonna stop us? No, but there's things that will. Mister, you can't fence out what's all it's been. Stringing fence is only stringing trouble. <laughs> Fences came to close land off. Windmills came to open land up. Before the windmills came, men had to know where water was or watch their cattle die. They had to go around the long, dry stretches. But now the wind turned the blades that sucked the water from the earth. More land, new land, more people moving in, more fences built. There were men who looked ahead and saw a need for better beef. They went ahead to breed it, imported Hereford bulls and shorthorns, fenced their stock in and the other man's out, and saw to it the fences stayed. It had to come. The drifting days were ending. And after a while, only the hawk remembered the trail when the grass grew back again. Time to settle in, to put down roots, to find one place and belong to it, to build a house, to find a wife, to tend to business the rest of your life. Many long trails together now rode the trail along, like the gun. But when it came to being brave, uh, who can say which was the bravest one? They is both cut from the same piece of leather. Came, it was all different. Only one thing stayed the same. The cowboy stayed the same. <laughs> there ain't nothing to being a cowboy today. Well, just look at them sleeping under a roof, so they's got to go outside before they even know what the weather is. Now, just a minute. The life of a cowboy today ain't much different from what it was in the old days. Rain or shine, hot or cold, there's a pile of work to do. Not easy work. Washing in it? Why? 
In the old days, a cowboy only took a bath when he had to swim a river. And he washed his clothes at the same time. A lot of work is still done on horseback, so training horses is an important man's smell and a man's way while they're little. A cowboy prides himself on owning well-bred stock. They're mannerly, smart, take well to their work, and faster than the backwash on a bullet. Yeah, pretty to look at, but so plumb persnickety they can sit on the sofa with the women folks. Well, anyway, these are the Johnson boys. Bob, uh, he's the quiet one, the sort of heads for the corner when there's company. Serious and hard working most of the time, but, but when he does grin, he can light up the county on a dark night. And this is Bo. Now, Bo figures going to bed is a sin, and getting up's a worse one. Born with a good eye for a fast horse or a pretty woman. The two boys are as different as day from night, but they're both good cowboys. I weren't saying they ain't nice boys. They are, right nice. It's when it comes to comparing them with the old time cowboys, I got a burr under my saddle every time. In the land of the meadow lark, in the land of the banded owl, in the land of the meadow lark, in the land where the coyotes howl, my heart rides free in this vast country, free as the tumbleweed. My horse and me don't need company. As a tumbleweed in the land of the meadow lark, in the land of the banded owl, in the land of the meadow lark, in the land where the coyotes howl. Cowboy has to be pretty much of a doctor anymore. White-faced cows get pink eye, bad, and they gotta be dosed before it gets a chance to spread. They have to watch for ear ticks and screw worms or any open wounds that might get infected and put an animal off his feed. I never did much cotton to these hothouse cows. And, well, an epidemic can wipe out a herd faster than a hound dog and lick a skillet. Used to be, a cow was so tough a rattlesnake get locked jaw just trying to bite one. A cowboy has to be an all-round handyman to keep the ranch machinery running. Have you ever wondered why a cowboy tips his head back so much to watch the sky? He's looking for rain. That's mighty imported in dry country. The boys have got to keep that windmill working, even if they have to tie it up with baling wire. Things has come to a pretty pass, though, when you figure more cowhands get hurt these days falling off a windmill than falling off a horse. There's one job, though, that every cowboy hates, mending fence. Now, take a place like this one, 57 sections. Now, a section is 640 acres, that's one square mile. Put a fence around 57 square miles. That's a lot of walking for a man who'd rather ride. The work is hard and the pay is low. It he the tumble The sun is hot, except when it's not. It he the tumble the land of the meadow lark, in the land of the banded owl, in the land of the meadow lark, in the land where the coyotes howl. Every few days, Bob and Bo check the water holes and ponds. 
Sometimes when an old cow is poly, she'll wait out to drink, get her belly full of water and get stuck in the mud. If she ain't found in time, she'll either starve to death or drown. Boys put a rope on her and haul her out. They call it pulling bog. And when they tail her up, they keep an eye on her, cause instead of feeling grateful, she's probably feeling meaner than a stepped on skunk. Have to turn around and hook the man who pulled her out. comes across a late-born calf, or one whose mammy was smart enough to hide him out in the brush during spring branding. Calves are hornry little rascals, but they've got to be taken care of whether they like it or not. It stands to reason, don't it, that the cowboy likes animals? Why else would he spend his life taking care of them? Most places, branding is a state law, just like vaccinating your kids against smallpox. Like a lot of things, it ain't pleasant, but it's necessary. The work a cowboy has to do is aggravating. It's always hot and hard and dirty and sometimes downright discouraging. Bob will ride home tonight so tired he'll feel like somebody used him to pound nails with. what says a cowboy is mean, the way he ropes and ties and handles critters. Well, let me ask you, have you ever watched a cowboy carrying a dogie calf? A dogie is an orphan calf, and if his mammy died when he was born, like as not, he has never known the taste of milk. It'll cost Bo a lot of time and patience to fool with him, to raise him till he's big enough to go it on his own. Bo has to learn him how to eat. Let him suck his finger until he savvies how to swallow him. Mm, poor little cuss. He'll always be pot and undersized because he got off to such a bad start. But don't worry. Before the week is out, he'll be button Bo clean across the feet pen when he comes out of carrying a bucket. To hear the metal line don't like to hear the owl and I lie awake full of lonely hay whenever the coyotes howl in the land of the metal line in the land of the banded owl in the land of the metal line in the land where the coyotes howl while Bob works, he always keeps a lookout for sign of trouble. Say, like mountain lion or bobcats. In dry years, when there ain't many rabbits for him to catch, even a coyote will attack a calf. They don't kill them too often, but you'd be surprised how many little calves lose their tails or get bit up bad. <laughs> Thank you. 
When he swings off his saddle most nights, a cowboy just heats up a skillet full of grub and heads for his blankets. But after just so long, the lonesomeness comes sneaking in like a cold night wind. Then, how did do old Manny rides by saying how there's a dance over to Zalves' place tonight? Then it's good to think about it. A chance to chew the fat with the boys again and who knows? Maybe meet a pretty girl. Saturday night tonight, boys. Hooray for Saturday night. There's gonna be a full moon shining awful bright. Pretty girls are waiting, waiting just for me. Let's not keep them waiting. Let's uh, start a jamboree. Oh, Saturday night in town, boys. Da da dee dee dee. Gonna kiss the young ones, gonna kiss the old. The stories that you're gonna hear ain't never yet been told. Oh, Saturday night tonight, boys, hooray, da dee dee dee. Da dee 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 dee. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Hit you! Ah. 20 miles to a dance, boys, and 20 miles back home. That's riding 40 miles, boys, a straddle and ornery roam. But when I hit that dance, boys, you'd better all stand clear. Cause when I'm at a dance, boys, I'm apt to paw and rear. Yuck, look out, girlies, yuck, look out now. Yuck, look out, girlies, I hear that fiddle now. To the left on a heel and toe When you break that ring, go do si do do See how you do do si lo Keep on going and it don't be slow Chicken in the bread pan, picking out a dough Where to keep on doing that do si do Promenade home with a girl you know Now everybody's swinging whirl Go round and round that pretty little girl Now Alan man left with the old left hand In her right to your honey and her right left friend Right and left, go round the ring It's hand over hand to your pretty little thing Promenade home, go round to go in a promenade home with a girl you know. Now the girl's to the center and the back to the bar and the men to the center with a right hand star. Now pass partner, eight love friend, and they go to your corner. A left of a man, then a right, your honey and a right left friend. Go right and left, don't be late. Meet your honey and your promenade eight. Promenade home and don't be slow when they get back home with a girl you know. Now everybody gonna swing and whirl. Go round and around that pretty little girl. Now swing her high and swing her low. Swing around, don't let her go. Now the four men star in the center of the set. Go all the way around, you're not through yet. Turn your partner left hand around. Turn the right hand lady by the right hand around. Four men star in the center of the floor. Say she around or she might get sore. Swing with the corner and you don't be late. You ought to be swinging your own little date. It's all around the left hand lady. Oh boy, oh what a baby. See so around your pretty little tall, the cutest gal you ever saw. Nail a man left with the old left hand in a right ear, honey, with a right left friend. Go right and left and you don't be late. Gonna meet your gal, now promenade eight, promenade eight, and it don't be slow. Get back home with the girl you know. The girl's to the center and do it shady. It's all around the left hand lady. See saw around your pretty little tall. Now a man left with the old left hand. It's right ear, honey, and a right left friend. Hand over hand, go round the ring. Meet your gal, now everybody swing. Promenade home, go round the floor. Your honey go round and round to the hop of your foot makes a hole in the ground. Have a man left with the old left hand. Right to your honey and a right left friend. Go down the river, go round the bend. Meet your own, turn back again. Now meet your honey and a meet your maid. Now take the girl and your promenade. Twenty 
20 miles, boys, and 20 miles back home. That's 40 lonesome miles, boys, riding an ornery roan. And when the dance is over, when the dance is done, it's back to chops and cows, boys, keeping them on a run. Yuck-ha-ha, look out, doggy. Yuck-ha-ha, look out now. Yuck-ha-ha, get on, doggy, and quit that falling now. Well, I still say cowboys today is softer in the downside of a feather. That is, when you compare them with some I used to know. But one thing's still the same. Cowboy can dance half the night, or even all of it, and hit the saddle again long before daybreak. And they ain't forgot how to ride out and pitch in when the feller down the road needs a hand. Business time on a ranch is roundup time. That's when a man feels like he ought to be wearing three hats and walking in four directions. Can't find hard hands no more. They're rare as an Indian in a blanket. So a fella has to spread out like a broody old hen and count on his neighbors for extra hands. Everybody pitches in to help, even the kids, as soon as they're big enough to open a gate or keep the water bucket full. And the women, they not only attend to the cooking, and there's lots of it to do, but some of them still manage to get down to the corrals and lend a hand. This ranch, uh, the Lathams, carries three brands, that of the father and his two sons. So when the roper drags out a calf, he sings out the brand the mother cow carries. Then the flankers move in to throw and tie, while the brander makes sure he marks the calf with the same brand its mother wears. Then the women move in and inoculate the calf and swab his ears for ticks. At the same time, he's dehorned to cut down on the danger of injury from the hooking one another. Everything is done that can be done to make sure they'll grow up fat and healthy. But just like kids, they'll buck and bawl and pay no heed, even when Mama stands there saying, now it's not gonna hurt a bit. Cows ain't the only ones that get a workout. This calf here outweighs Bo by a good 200 pounds. To snap his arm like kindling wood with just one kick. Bo makes sure he plants a foot solid in the crook of the calf's hind legs. A few hours of this kind of work and a man is so tired, he has to lean against the fence to spit. epidemic, say tick fever or the hoot and mouth disease, the cows are run through a dipping vat. Each one has to go clear under. Some of them get so they can do some pretty fancy diving. Working with animals, you've got to be set for anything. Cowboy generally has a blister for every buck he's earned. There's only a few trees in cow country, and money don't grow none of them. place in the world and see a cowboy and you'll know he's a cowboy by the way he walks, by the way he talks, by the clothes he wears. Not that there are ever two alike, there aren't. Some are easy going, some hot tempered, some are tame, some are wild. 
Some are tall, some are short, but they always have a lot of things in common. They're always talking cows or speculating on the weather. Cowboys can always find work a laying around, but still they can always find time to stop to watch whatever is worth the looking. Like a bullfight. No matter how many times a cowboy has seen one, he'll always climb the fence to see another. to make it before dark, one of the boys will just camp out and wait for morning. Cowboys know how to manage most any place they are. They don't ask for favors out of life no more than they'd ask for a pillow on their saddle. What's easy is easy, what's hard is hard. A man takes things as they come. That's the code they live by, a code that's never been written down on paper and won't ever be. A cowboy has been taught to ride whatever he throws his rope around. He figures that's as good a way as any. But even if he doesn't know it, he still follows the old trails, still lives by the old traditions. Take his clothes, they'll bear that out. His boots are still high taught to keep out dirt and soft to let his feet get air. The toes are narrow to pick up a stirrup on a wheeling horse. The heels are high to give him drag on the end of a rope. His hat's his trademark, like it always was a month's pay to buy a Stetson. He uses it to fan a fire or for a balance pole when he tops a bronc. He'll wear it till it's sustained and ragged. A bull bat can fly through the holes. It's the first thing he puts on in the morning the last thing he takes off at night. He'd stop to put his hat on in front of a stampede. He's had to learn to use the clothes he wears for a hundred different things, because he always travels light. Now his bandana he calls a wipe. It serves to wrap around a brand and iron, to lift the lid of a coffee pot, to mark a trail, to hold his boot sole to the upper till he can find some nails, to hobble a horse or to tie his hat on in a dust storm. His pants are Levi's, tight fitting to keep out of his way, hard wearing, cause well, they gotta be. Yeah, a cowboy's a peculiar sort. He won't chop wood, but uh, he'll drag it up to the fire. 
You'll always see his horses fed before he'll eat himself. And you can bet your bottom dollar he won't do anything on foot that he can do on horseback. He's the way he is because, now that's the way he's made. He still wears the same kind of clothes his granddad wore because, well, he's the same kind of man his granddad was. He wouldn't change places with another man for all the money in the world. On Sundays, the cowboys get together for a country rodeo. Pass the hat around to make up a kitty and compete among themselves. It's a little rodeo, not a big one. Just folks who have much to do and drop on over. The kind where the women pack a lunch, enough for all. Maybe rig an old time costume and ride in the grand parade. Everyone that has a horse or can borrow one gets in too. Now and then some little kid is sitting proud and tall in front of daddy. Mighty glad he got to ride a horse instead of in the wagon with the other kids. because they want to instead of because they have to. It's competing against a stopwatch instead of a stampede. The sun in your moccasins and riding the humps. Showing you ain't afraid of getting let down a uh, sudden life. When it comes to calf roping, the average cowboy is pretty good. After all, it's what he does for a living. These boys never miss. Uh, well, hardly ever. Cowboys tearing up the town and getting into trouble. But mostly it's just from cutting up and not from cussedness. There's only a few what wear calluses on their elbows from leaning on a bar. He lives rugged, so he plays rugged. He may have a college diploma nailed up on his wall, but he'll seldom let you see his brain is showing. He'd rather wrestle steers than wrestle words. A good man can rope and tie a calf in about 10 seconds. Now, Clyde here, he made a good catch, and he probably... No. Like I was saying, 10 seconds is pretty good time. A fella like Clyde, whoop! This just ain't Clyde's day. up bull riding, it sure does help if he has a little snake blood in his veins. There's always some joker who has to make things even harder. Someone will bet ten dollars on the side, he won't come out riding backwards, the next thing you know he's done it. Watching where he went instead of where he's going. 
But if you really want to know how to sit out a tornado, watch Bo Johnson. He drew the blameable, the one with a belly full of bed spraying and coming out like a left-handed egg beater. Hey, looks like Bo's aiming to ride him till he's gentle down and lady broke. The last frazzle of the day is always a wild horse race. All the bucking broncs are turned into the arena. Then the cowboys team up in twos and go in and rope a bronc. Sort of a case of letting the man pick his own poison. The idea is to get a saddle and a bridle on the cloud kicker you snag, get on yourself and ride him to the other end of the arena and back again. That don't always work out that the first man off is the first man back. The shortest distance between two places is a straight line. Uh, that's not counting up and down. Buster, he got his saddle on all right, but Plum forgot to nail his hat down. The way his neck's up popping, he's lucky his head stays on. The cowboy has a notion of what he wants to do, but the bronc is always sure to have another. When they're coming and going, traffic gets pretty thick. About now, the judge is wishing he'd have stayed home and played checker. Say, looks like Bob Johnson is gonna make it in. Of course, he's coming in the hard way, but he's coming in. Nope, by dad, he turned dirt farmer too. Well, that's the way it is. It's not a big time rodeo by any means. It's just some cowboys having fun. Cowboy, it ain't an easy life. Never was, never will be. But it's a mighty satisfying one. Out here where you can see storm on one horizon and the sunset on the other, a man comes to feel that he's part of something so big and so eternal that his own little dust flurry don't amount to much. the very beginning of this cow business, it's never been the size of a man's boots that counted, but how he filled them. Cowboys just don't talk friendship. They live it. Man is thought well of when he knows his job and does it the best he can. I grew up with this country, you might say. Growing up is hard, but growing old is harder. But when a man's rode a good trail, a straight trail, he's got no call to ride it over, except for remember. Lots of them has already rode up the shelter side of the mountain. But before they went, they left their brand burned deep on the country. It was good in them days. Good to jab your boot heel into land that no other white man knowed. But it had to change. Things always do. Boards bleach in the sun, bones bleach in the sun. And a house that one time was spilling full of kids has got a lizard sunning on the door sill. When men come, they take from the land to build. When they move on, the earth takes back again. When the dobies some man sweat and bent to build are washed away by the rain, blowed away by the wind. One day, how it was, is gone. If you figure by boards and buildings, the old times and the old ways is gone forever. But if you figure by the kind of men this country bred, well, I like to think that what I had a hand in starting 
is always gonna keep a going on.